Should parents let their kids go trick-or-treating? Are they worshipping the devil or pagan gods when they wear gothic costumes? To find out more about the origins of Halloween, we met with professor and priest Father John Wach at the Holy Cross University in Rome. What we've learned from Father Wach has been an amazing discovery. The, the holiday of, of Halloween is actually one of the most Catholic uh, holidays in the, in the entire calendar because it comes from the, the word for holy. Hallow means holy in, in archaic English. We still use the same word, of course, in the Our Father. When we say, hallowed be thy name, we're using the same word that we use in Halloween. It's a word for holiness. And it refers to the fact that the day after Halloween is the feast of all, all the saints, all of the holy ones. It's a very surprising discovery, but it's true. Halloween is a Catholic feast, and Father John Wach has more evidence to prove it. But even the, the date on which we celebrate Halloween and the feast of all saints uh, has to do with Rome, actually. Uh, it was a pope in the 8th century who dedicated a chapel in the old Basilica of St. Peter's to all the saints. And he moved the Feast of All the Saints to November 1st because that was the date of the dedication of this chapel in St. Peter's Basilica. If Halloween is a Catholic feast, why then do the celebrations often have to do with pagan and Gothic themes? The custom of dressing up for Halloween probably has its roots in, in two different ancient customs. One is simply guising, which was a, a medieval custom, usually it was done by children who would dress up in different you know, costumes and they would go door to door uh, asking for sweets. The other uh, custom has to do with frightening off evil spirits. And that's where you would have the justification for dressing up in frightening costumes. So there are two traditions, a medieval one and a Celtic one, intertwined with the celebration of All Saints' Eve. Devil's number one holiday, it's Halloween. The, devil one, the devil's holiday is Halloween. And a lot of believers today, today, you know, they are celebrating Halloween. They are going on and renting costumes, buying costumes, making costumes, uh, painting their doors, putting pumpkins in front of the door. First of all, the pumpkin, the pumpkin, when you take the pumpkin, you, 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 you represent the demon, the demon that controls the rivers, which is the demon called Ochun in Santeria. So the pumpkin brings that demon into your house when you put pumpkins at your door. You see, so, 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 so that demon operate with pumpkins. So when you put pumpkins in your door on Halloween as believers, you are giving the devil a, a entry. You're giving that principality, the demon that runs the rivers. Her name is Ochun, which is a, a type of Jezebel in your Jehovah religion. You're bringing that demon into your home. You're giving it access to your home, access to your family. And, and, and the most remarkable thing that the devil taught me was I love when they celebrate Halloween. I love when they get dressed. I love when they celebrate my holiday because they come intertwined. You come intertwined with darkness. I don't care if you're reading your Bible 20 times a day. When you turn around and you celebrate Halloween or you open your door to Halloween or you open your life to Halloween or you open your family to Halloween, the devil has you by the throat. The devil has a stronghold on you by the throat. And, and, and one of the things that the, the devil has shown at the time that I was in an enemy's camp, the devil has shown me that the reason he loves Christians to celebrate Halloween, because it brings four, it brings, the Bible says it brings a four to five generation of curse in your family. That's one of the issues that the devil knows, because and then if he knows that you can celebrate Halloween as a believer, he knows that the next generation in your family will celebrate the same thing because it brings the generation of curse, will bring a ripple effect in the spur round would attach yourself to your other family members. And on top of that, he, the devil, one of the things that the devil loved that Christian believers would celebrate Halloween is, 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 and I'm giving this out today because I hope that it, once it's in the archives, people can tune into it because uh, to, uh, Halloween is not, we're not too far off from Halloween. We're not, I mean, uh, July is over. We, we're in August. We're coming up, we're coming up in the month of August. Summer is, is gone pretty much. So, so believers are preparing themselves Halloween party, Halloween gathering. Would you have churches? To, you have churches that are doing something that it, that it blows my mind, brother Shannon. You have churches that are that are going out and uh, celebrating. For, instead of Halloween, they're celebrating harvest. 
harvest. The only harvest we know is the souls of people that are out there that are lost. The, har the, the, the harvest is planted. The work is a few. I mean, what is this harvest stuff that we have to celebrate to replace Halloween in the churches? So you're bringing your curse to your church when you do that. You're bringing, I mean, you, what, what would you, you can give candy and, and stuff to people throughout the year to do harvest in your church. When you're bringing the curse upon the children in your church. Because the devil, is, is, that's like, 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 like a substitute of Halloween. Why are you substituting Halloween with something else? When it's not even in the Bible, the Lord say, it's not even in the Bible to celebrate a substitute a holiday from the holiday. So, and another thing is, you, you're dressing up your kids. One of the biggest demonic dis disillusion that the devil brings is to change costume, put on an outfit, paint your face. I don't care if you put on the Little Mermaid. I don't care if you put on Casper the Friendly Ghost. I don't care if you put on uh, whatever Ninja Turtle, whatever costume you put on. And when the devil got into the garden and touched them and convinced them and, 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 and confused their mind, that he changed their identity. He changed their identity. And one amazing thing that the devil does to many Christians today when you put on a costume, he changes your identity of who you are by putting on a costume that you're not. You open yourself up to the most demonic attack on Halloween ever you can ever imagine. Christ, your identity is changed. The devil is the biggest identity theft stealer of mankind. Amen? The devil is the biggest identity death stealer of mankind. There's Christians that are walking around that don't have no identity who they are. They don't have no identity of who, what their purpose. You stop Christians out there in the street and you say, what is your purpose and your destiny? I don't know. But they know how to celebrate Halloween. And I guarantee you that if you ask those believers that they want to be honest or transparent, have you ever celebrated Halloween? Yes, I have. And if you're celebrating harvest, you're celebrating Halloween. And that's the danger of, of, of believers today, that instead of us affecting the world, the world is affecting us. Instead of us affecting the world and bringing them to the church, we're bringing the world into the church. And now the church is entertainment. The church is, is an amusement park. The church is the circus. We need to entertain people to keep people. We need to entertain people so they can come back. No, I don't entertain anybody. And, and Halloween is, is one of the, the if, you, if you see, if you go back to the history of Halloween, and I'm talking about the history years after years, the most demonic attack, the most people missing, the most people missing, people, human sacrifices, uh, skulls, uh, cemeteries, plots upside down, people digging out bones and skeletons, and people digging out skulls for Halloween, the day after Halloween, all, all, Saint, all Saint Day. All same day, people buying candles and buying candles and celebrating and making uh, different food offerings to their dead relatives. Those are demons, people. You, 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 got, you got Christians celebrating all same day, the day after Halloween, which is November 1st. How are you going to celebrate? It's like, me get, it's like me being married and I'm sleeping with a prostitute, but I love my wife. Oh, I'm, I'm married. I love my wife, but I'm sleeping with a prostitute. No, there's no way that that makes sense. There's no way that you can you can fit that in someone's mind. So so the attack, the demonic attack, the demonic stronghold, the gateways, the portals, the 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 the, 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 four, the four to five generations being cursed. It starts celebrating Halloween. Halloween. It, it, people think is they look at it. They look you know we get caught up with the historical aspect of what Halloween is. But people, that's just a story. The the, the whole picture of Halloween. It's like you honoring the devil. You bow down to the devil because I used to celebrate Halloween. The biggest witchcraft that I used to do was on Halloween to kill, steal, and destroy Christian believers, destroy anything that came in my path that week that, that, that I, I was preparing a week ahead of time. As a matter of fact, I was preparing two weeks ahead of time to kill you on the 31st. Coffins, bones, portions, you name it, I had it. Halloween. It is a nuisance. It is an abomination. So how is it that you're going to go to a Halloween party? How is it you're going to have a, a, a harvest in your church? That is the day. If you have done that, it's time to repent tonight. Close these doors and cut the ties that the enemy has on me, my family, and the next three or four generations in my, in, in, in my family line. The Halloween is, is, is poison to the believer. And to the non-believer, if, if you look at the stories in this year coming up,
I give you an example. Look at the newspaper this year coming up. To non-believers, how many people die and get killed and get stabbed and get shot and get mi- and they're missing on Halloween? People, if you play with fire, if you play with fire, you're going to smell like toast. And not even if you play with fire, you're going to burn your whole house down. And you have nothing left of you because the devil comes to play for keeps. The devil plays for keeps. The devil is the mo- he has a mastermind of strategies. Believe me, I sat in the devil's mind for 25 years. I sat in the devil's mind for 25 years. His mind is full of strategies. How to entrap, engage, and kill, steal, and destroy to holidays, to events, to cultures. And, and I end with this. And I say this to the believers out there that are listening under the sound of my voice. It's time to repent. People, I went to hell. I don't know how long I was there. That's how I got saved. I tell you right now, I, I, I could have been there for a half hour. I could have been there for 20 minutes. I can't even give you the time that I was down there. But I did win. And one thing, just that 20 minutes, half hour, they, they just say I was there for 20 minutes and a half hour. That was enough to tell me to turn from my wicked ways, to turn from, from 25 years of devil worshiping. And I say this to the believers out there that are listening under the sound of my voice. It's time to repent. It's time to repent. 